Hey everybody, Nick Safoni here from realestateinvestoronline.com. Thanks so much for joining me for today's version of TGIF. Now, I realize today is Saturday. We're still going to call it TGIF just to keep in the spirit of things. But it was the holidays and I kind of lost track of days. And I remember, oh my gosh, I forgot to make the TGIF I wanted to make yesterday. It's New Year's Eve, so Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you have a great year. I hope you listened to last week's, um, actually last week we posted a video and uh, quite a long audio about setting goals and preparing a real estate investing business plan. So anytime you're going into the new year, it's a great time to reevaluate. So if you didn't listen to it, make sure to watch the last episode of TGIF and you'll learn some things, get a lot of good help. So anyway, today we're going to be talking about what I call telephone magic, some techniques that you can use to help you do better when you're talking on the phone. I know a lot of times people are scared to talk on the phone, whether you're calling sellers or buyers or you're calling somebody to approach them for private lending or whatever it might be. So we're going to give you some trips, trips, some tips and strategies that are going to help you do two things. One, take control. Second, create a relationship. And really this is a relationship business. What we're selling, what we have to offer, a house, a deal, help, whatever it is, People want to do business with people that they have things in common with, with people that they like, and most importantly, with people that they trust. And these are some techniques that are going to help you do that. So first off, if you don't have a phone that has a hold button, it might be something you want to consider going out and investing in. So you can put people on hold. Um, maybe if you have two lines and you have a flash button, you can flash through the other line and come back. That might act like a hold button. But sometimes you get somebody on the phone and they're talking too much, they're asking question after question, they're being a little bit pushy or a little aggressive. One a good technique is to put that person on hold because it does a couple things. First off, it shows them that you're busy, even if you're not. It shows them that you're busy. So, oh, hold on, I gotta go grab this call. And you could do that at strategic times because when you come back to the phone, you pick up the conversation where you want to pick up the conversation, not where they were. So if you got somebody that's just being a little bit too pushy or a little aggressive or they're not letting you get through your script, keep putting them on hold and then you come back and take off where you wanted to. Secondly, you want to use the word yes a lot. Plus, more importantly, you want to get them using the word yes a lot. If you can get them to say yes over and over again, they're more likely to say yes at the end of the call. And it's a habit. You want to get them in the habit of saying yes, 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 yes. Like that little puppy dog in the back of the car that's always nodding. In face-to-face -face sales, we used to teach people to nod when you're talking to people, especially when you're going to ask them a question that you want them to say yes to. It's subliminal. So some ways to get them in the habit of saying yes. Here's something I've done for years. When I call somebody, let's say I'm calling Joe Smith. I'll call and they pick up the phone, say hello, hi. Hi, is Joe Smith there? Yes, this is Joe. I repeat to them, is this Joe? It gets them to say, yes, it is Joe. They've said it twice already. Then I say, Joe, can you hear me okay? Well, yeah, I can hear you great. Well, I've just got them to say yes three times. So even if they're insignificant questions, you just want to get them in the habit of saying yes. I mean, I've even had people say to me, I just told you my name was Joe, but you want to get them in the habit of saying yes. Then when you get to the important questions, they're more, more likely to say yes. Also, you want to learn to use the if word, not the F word, the if word. I, I, F, is that backwards? F, I can't, F, if, like, um, and, and the if word is good. It's a strong subliminal motivator of people. And you want to use the if word to make them think that you're not going to work with them. Because the whole goal of your phone call, like if you're calling to schedule an appointment to look at a house or whatever it might be, or you're trying to get a special price, or you're trying to get them to go look at a house, you want to get them, they should be selling you. Like, especially if you're talking to a seller, they should be convincing you to buy the house. You shouldn't be convincing them to sell you the house at your price. So by using the if word, it, it triggers the fear of loss mechanism. They're afraid that you're, gonna, that you're not going to buy the house. You want them to think that you're not interested, and the if word helps you do that. So you say things like, if I talk to my partner and we decide your house might be worth looking at, or if you can provide the house to us at a good enough price, or if this is a house that we're interested in buying. You want to make them think that you're just about ready to hang up the phone and that you're not interested. 
The more they think you're not interested, the more likely they are to give you a better price or to give you better terms or whatever it might be. So learn to use the if word when you're on the phone. Thirdly, or fourthly, or whatever the heck it is, you want to learn how to mirror people. The technique is called mirroring. Like I said before, people want to do business with people that they like, that they trust, and they feel they have something in common with, right? So you want to reflect back to them the same personality, the same, char per the same character type. You want to reflect back to them whatever they're giving to you. So if you're talking to somebody on the phone, they're, they're talking kind of fast, and you should try to talk kind of fast too. If you're talking to someone on the phone who's a little bit older and they're talking a little bit slower, then you should also talk like you're a little bit older or a little bit slower. I've I talked to an investor once before who puts on accents. If he's talking to someone from down south, he'll say y'all a lot. He'll put things on like that. He'll say howdy and he'll say uh, whatever <laughs> that he has to say. Now, I'm not saying to put on a fake accent, but you want them to believe they have something in common with you. You're the same type of person. If they're talking street, what I call talking street, using slang, that type of thing, try to use some slang back. You want them to feel like they have something in common with you. And that goes into our next technique, which I call pet the goldfish. And this can be used over the phone. It could also be used in the, in the home. And, <clears throat> and this all has to do with trying to find their hot buttons and getting them to like you and creating the relationship. You know. Petting the goldfish is, let's say you're talking to somebody on the phone and they say, well, I can't show you the house next Thursday night because my daughter has a basketball game or whatever it might be. Oh, your daughter plays basketball. How old is your daughter? Oh, she's, she's 11. You know, she's in third grade and she's on the school basketball team. Oh my gosh, I remember when my kids were younger and they were playing on the school basketball team. Things like that, find something you have in common with them. If they say that they have grandkids. Talk about your grandkids. Now I'm not telling you a lie. If you have grandkids, or talk about their grandkids. When they say something that excites them, you want to talk about it a little bit. It's the same thing when you go to the house to look at the house and you're, you're walking around the house. If you see a picture on the mantle of their kid playing hockey, talk about hockey. Or if there's fishing poles in the garage, talk about how great of a fisherman you are or whatever it might be. It has to do with creating that relationship and again, finding something that you have in common with these people to more likely get them to do business with you. You could also use this hot button, like let's say you ask somebody why are they selling and they say, well my son went and moved to Florida and took my grandkids with him. She doesn't care about seeing her son, she wants to see those grandkids, right? So you are going to throw things in throughout the conversation like, well, if we can just wrap up the paperwork today, I can get you down to Florida to see your grandkids that much sooner. So you want to find out what their hot button is by finding out things they like talking about, personal things in their life, and then bringing those things up over and over again and using that to create a relationship. Finally, another technique is don't be afraid to set a phone appointment. Don't just say, well, I'll call you back tomorrow, or I'm going to talk to my partner about this, see if we're interested or not, and if we're interested, I'll call you back in a couple days and try to get you down to Florida to see your grandkids as quick as we can by buying your house. You want to set a specific time to call them back. Don't just say I'll call you back in a couple days. I'm going to talk to my partner and I'll call you Tuesday at 3.15. It does a couple things. First, it shows that you're really busy, even if you're not, and that your time is valuable. Secondly, you want them to, you want to get a hold of them. I mean, how many times have you had a hot lead and you can't get them on the phone? I, I'm dealing with that right now with, with one house, with a buyer. She calls me and leaves a message. I call her back two minutes later. She's not there. She's back at work. She's on the other line. So set a phone appointment with somebody and it'll go a lot further to get them on the phone to wrap up the deal. So a few pointers, not pointers, but a few, I guess this is an advertisement. If you're not a free member of realestateinvestoronline.com, go to www.rei-tv.com, rei-tv.com for Real Estate Investing TV, and you can get a free membership. You'll get a bunch of free videos, uh, hours of free training, and, and some other goodies just for becoming a free member, and we'll let you know when we post another TGIF, and let you know a lot of good stuff become, by being a member. Secondly, Join our mastermind group. A couple times a month, we get on the phone live. I answer all questions for all our mastermind members. They communicate with each other by email. 
Uh, you send one email that goes to the whole group. So if you need help or you're looking for partners or you just have a question, it's the best way to do it. I monitor this. So if you have a question, you need help, send an email. I'll answer you. I'll help you with your business. It's one of the least expensive mastermind groups in the real estate industry. All the gurus are always telling me, Nick, you got to raise the price. Nick, you got to raise the price. And to be honest, we're lowering the price. And I wasn't going to say anything, and I hope it doesn't come back to bite me, but go to www dot real estate I almost forgot the address real estate investor online dot com forward slash m mind m m i n d but don't go until like the fifth or sixth of January of 2012 if you listen to this recording so don't join if you're thinking about joining like today because I'm coming up with a really special offer and you're gonna pay a lot less if you wait two weeks to join and that's that's a surprise I got for you say a Christmas present holiday present whatever it is so have a great holiday like I said I'm recording this on New Year's Eve I'm not gonna get drunk tonight I promise but I am gonna party and have a good time I hope you party and have a good time too real estate investor online.com there's all kinds of articles videos you should go back and check it out at least once or twice a week we're always putting new stuff on there click on the articles section because every day we put a new article or two about real estate investing and you can just learn a bunch there's hundreds and hundreds not hundreds and hundreds but there's hundreds of articles there so but don't forget check out our mastermind page real estate investor online.com forward slash m m i n d for mobile mastermind or for something like that this is nick until next time go make an offer and don't forget to use the phone techniques <laughs>